There we are. There we are. Looks like we're playing some Magic the Gathering today. So we have a bunch of these things. I kept re-rolling them, and none of them gave me one that was 750, so that was unfortunate. But anyways, we are going to continue with doing our Quick Draft Kaldheim. Again, the reason we do Kald we do Quick Draft instead of Premier Draft is because Quick Draft gives us infinite time. Infinite time is very valuable for someone like me. Whew. So, by the way, I just want to show you some math as to why you should probably do this. So, like, if you compare it to the store, so if you just buy packs, three packs, so it's 200, 200 gems for per one pack. So then, but then alternatively, you instead go drafting Kalheim. Okay, this is pure your draft. Um, oh my gosh. But if you go to quick draft, 750. So it's... 150 more gems, so it's about the price of four booster packs. Worst case scenario, you get 50 gems back, so it's actually 700. 700. There's already a pack there, so it's kind of like 500. So it's so it's 500 gems for this draft. The draft involves three packs, so you're basically getting more packs. And you have the draft cycle, so if there's like a specific card you want, like a specific rare, you can pick those. So even if you go zero wins... Um, the quick draft is better than, better economic wise than just like buying booster packs. And it's like, you're like, oh, but buying booster packs is quick. I still, I mean, I've never had enough money where I needed to really go with speed. But if you really want, you can just click the top left corner and then just concede in every match. And yes, you concede, you don't retire because that gives you three free wins to people who need it. So make sure to do that. Now, let's do this. Quick draft, Kaldheim. Let's see if we still have the stuff. We went seven wins, we went zero wins, then seven wins. Let's see how we'll do this time. All right. So, Cosmos Elixir. This basically says if we're a control deck, draw infinite cards. If we're behind, gain two life, but the two life isn't gonna be significant. So if we can force a board stall, Cosmos Elixir is great. Alternatively, we have removal, we have removal, we have a good two drop, we have a good two drop. Yeah. This is a pretty stacked this is a pretty good pack. Oh my gosh, another removal. So lots of white removal. I'm gonna go with Cosmos Elixir. See if we can play it. If not, it's okay. It's okay. Always pick the rare, figure out if it works. Then you could know whether that rare is wrong for the future. Alright. Bound in Gold is removal. We do want core more of a, a stalemate sort of board more often than not. So we have a removal and we have a removal. I think these are the only two options we even look at. Feed the Serpent. The double black mana ended up being far more costly than we expected. So we're going to go with the one white mana because this doesn't force us to pull too much. This can be a bomb. This is already all our card draw. This is already card draw and a stalemate. This is bigger creatures and a scale bait. This is... This is a weird card. It scries two, and then it kind of ramps and deals. Okay, it scries two. Or... This is just scry two draw card. This is what's the card called? This this isn't very good. It's scry two draw card, and then oh, it deals two damage and it ramps you out. So often those two don't come up. Ramping you out could work, but you already net um, tep. So ramping you out would be a tempo play if you didn't anti tempo by paying two mana to just scry. This is really good. I'm not going to deny the Jar of Glade Warren is really good. It's Exile a Creature from your Graveyard put two, but we already saw another removal um, in white, and we want to be a deck that slows the game down. So, I'm going to go with the removal right now. Alright. So, I don't think we're going to force white, so if we don't see any good white cards, we're going to ignore it. This is a card that, I think we just go with like a begrudgingly slow slow the game down sort of dual build right now this is a good finisher if we were aggressive deck we already have two cards that say we're not this is honestly a good card it's a three mana two three with breach and then it also gives plus one plus it all leaves behind the equipment elven bow is not a bad decision dread rider is also not but we're gonna go with the uncommon for now but dread rider was the other option here all right he also valkyrie path of world tree this has turned out to not be very good removal. The basic issue with it is the 1-1 blue bird is a lot more significant than you would expect. 
Um, it's always it's still applying pressure if you don't have a way to do what the bird. If you didn't have a way to deal with the first one, why do you have a way to deal with the bird? Kind of theme. It can work. It is good when it is good. It, when it's good, it's good. When it's bad, yeah. It's okay sometimes. It's often okay. But, alright. Just gotta figure out what I want next. So we don't have any removal other than run ashore, which I don't really count, and raven form. You know what? Let's just grab the raven form. So I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna try to grab... For this first pack, I'm basically going to grab the best card so I, we don't choose our color. So that we have options of those colors where we want them. Nico defines Destiny. Um, could work if we have a lot of, of Fortel cards. But we need a lot of Fortel cards for this to work. Um, that being said, I don't see anything else good here. Maybe the Shimmer Drift Veil. Maybe the Snow Covered Mountain. But like, I don't see anything good here. Let's just grab the Nico's Device Destiny. Because it does something at hey. So it is with a Cosmos Elixir, so maybe it does something. Alright. Crush the Weak is removal. Blue-white seems to be our colors right now, and this is a blue-light tap land. Sure. Crush the Weak was the other option, but... Hmm. Looks like we might be going blue-white anyways. God's Hall Guardian slows the game down, what Cosmos Elixir wants. Yeah. It's a nice body. I think we're going blue-white this time. It also works with Fortel, works with Nico's Defy Destiny. Cool. Let's go with this for now. Alright. Not a good card. Doesn't even remove the threat sometimes, just the body. This is even this is probably the best card right now. Otherwise it's You know, we couldn't try to push a three color with green. I, I don't want to remove the ability to do so. If we did, we would need Jaspar Sentinel as our mana base. Alright. These come back through. Let's see. That's a copy of target creature you control. Um, this slows... So this... A lot of people will see the poison and think this speeds the game up. No, this slows the game down. You're not going to gain enough poison triggers. So... Huh. Glimmering Frost helps with us possibly bringing in green. Um, this is not... I'm going to go with this for now, I think. Hmm. Yeah. We'll go with Finn for now. Rune of Flight is a card draw, and it allows a thing to become able to block from above. Alright. This is kind of a deck where... Actually, this is a deck where um, Revitalize can work, as well as Carfell Harbinger. Um, instead of Sorcery or a card with Fortel. Only to Fortel a card. Alright, so I can't use it to cast God's Hall Guardian, but I can use it to Fortel God's Hall Guardian. So we have two Fortels that Nico defies. I don't think that's so important. I think a Revitalize actually works with this sort of deck. Grab a Longbow. I actually do appreciate Longboats. They are something that sits around and does its job what it needs to. Um, I'll grab the Wings of the Cosmos. It might actually be a useful trick later. Warhorn Blast is not for this deck. Fe it could be a combat trick later. Fearless Pup I do not underestimate though. Fearless Pup, I do not underestimate. In Search of Greatness. So, this card is basically a two-mana card that says Scry 1. At the beginning of your upkeep, you Scry 1. It has another effect which can work for tempo, but doesn't happen that often. But, oh my gosh, I just realized. We are going with a pretty good blue-white Fortel deck. Vega the Watcher is the payoff with that. With Cosmos Elixir, we have all the card draw we will need with that. There we are. You know, this is not a bad card if we didn't have cards like Nico Defies Destiny in this pack. We might get this back around. That would be really cool to get one of the flip lands in a draft and it actually be the right pick. But it looks like we're blue-white. Only possibly splashing in green. Alright. Nothing good here. Ooh, Gates of Istenfell is a good card. It's a land that later becomes more card draw. We have life at card draw, which means we want to slow this game down. Raven form is, I mean, it's a foretell card. It does its job. The alternative is giant ox. I don't think so. I don't think so. Ooh, actually rune crown with rune of flight. Um, just have a uh, equipment that gets plus two plus two at flight. It draws a card when I play it. Makes all my threats that don't exist yet into threats. God's Hall Guardian become a 4-7 flyer. 
Um, funeral longboat. We have a 4 4 flyer sometimes. I think Rude Cloud is just too good. Raven Forb is okay, but Rude Cloud is just too good. Alright, we want slower two drops. We want two drop. We want, like, Story Seeker, Life Leaker to slow it down. That or Litjara. Glimpse of the Cosmos, we don't even have. We have two creatures right now, correct? Yep. We just need more bodies. Let's grab a body. Let's grab a body. Alright. Gold Vein pick? Or Mistwalker. Mistwalker. This is a this is a finisher. This is a giant for the cards that need giants. Wizards for the cards that need wizards. And it's a 1-4 that could become a 4-1 when the time comes. Easily Mistwalker. Lit Jar, Kid Seekers. Hey, it's a 4 out of 2 4 subtypes. Other types, it's 3 5. Uh, Mistwalker plus, like, a God's Hall Guardian. I wonder if Vehicle is considered a creature type. I'd have to look that up. Hmm. But I'd rather have the body, anyways. Oh, I could have actually picked the Scarecrow now that I looked at that again. We don't have enough Snowlands for Frosty Kitty to do anything. Raven Form. We'll try the Raven Form. Replicating Rain. Is this a deck that wants Replicating Rain? We're gonna make it go long, so... Sure, let's try a Replicating Rain. Alright. Anul. Is there enough artifacts and enchantments in this format? I think there might be. Hmm. We'll put that on the sideboard for now. Revitalize. Just being a slow, turtley deck. Hmm. I'll grab the Code Spell Cleric for now. All right, Dragon Ox is just a zero. Is just a six toughness creature. All right, Cosmos Charger. All right, so just in case all this foretell wasn't going to pay off, we now have a payoff. We have an additional payoff. Oh man, I like that. I like that. Whew. Avalanche Caller needs more snow. Port of Carfell. That being said, like, this is just an unlucky pack for us. Look, they've only taken one card. It was the rare. And there is now nothing we can play effectively. Maybe a Avalanche Caller, but that's often going to just be a two mana, one, three. Code Spell Cleric, I guess. Ugh. Definitely did not get the cards I wanted here. Usher of the Fall. No, Bounded. Nico Defies this. We already have so many Nico Defies Destinies. How many Foretell cards do we even have? One, two, three, four. We have four Fortel cards and like five rewards for Fortelling. I think we need the Mistwalker as the body. Nico's Defy Destiny is cool at all, but we need more bodies because we don't have enough. And this is a good body. Uh, might actually be Usher of the Fault. Nah, we're going Mistwalker. But yeah, we need more Fortel cards, actually. Alright. Berk Strider, Glacial Floodplain, I guess. Berk Strider can be a win condition, but we need more lands anyways if we want to make that a win condition. Bind the Monster slows them down. Undersea Invader could be a win condition for us. Hmm. Tough. We need more creatures. Okay. I mean, what is our win condition? I think it's just the God's Hall Guardian... What happens if they big a, play a big scary creature? Do we just Cosmos Charger and hope that that's enough? We'll pick the this invader for now. May not play it. Raven Form is a Fortel card. Mm. God's Hall Guardian. Also could be Master Scald, but what does that bring back? It's an artifact or a champion. So it could bring a Cosmos Elixir if that gets broken. It could bring back the Nikos Defies Destiny after they're used. Um, I actually like the God's Hall Guardian more, though. Mm. I think this is actually a deck... So, Rune of Sustenance is card draw. It's card draw and lifelink, which both together with a Rune Crown. Yeah, I think that's it. Run of Shore is not bad anymore, by the way. Run of Shore might be the pick. Do not underestimate Run of Shore right now. 
I cannot underestimate Run Ashore right now. Oof. Give Vega lifelink? Eh. Mistwalker lifelink? Hmm. Yeah, most of my creatures have flying already. Huh. Either that or is... Let me flip like that. This is not a creature. Alright. Not a creature. Move there. Move there. Yeah. We have a lot of threes. Which actually means we could foretell and then play a three drop. Actually, yeah, if you think, consider that. We have more two drops. We have a lot more two drops. Yeah, okay, now that I think about it that way, we have a lot of two drops. Alright, let's grab a run ashore. Alright, um, do I want the Scorn Effigy or the Story Seeker? Um, this is another foretell card. We have a lot of foretell rewards. Sure, we'll get one. Alright. Nothing really playable here. Flashing enchantment. Not really going to be using that much, I bet. This one's aggressive. We are controlling. We are just dirtling around. Alright, we'll see if this dirtle deck actually works. 13 creatures. That's starting to look better. Though the Code Spell Clerics are not the creatures we want. Rune of Speed? It's a rune. Could work sometimes. Alright. 44 cards, so we have enough cards. 13 creatures, so none of the creatures can go. None of the creatures can go. Alright. Replicating Rune doesn't seem necessary. So then we need two more removed. Alright. Um, maybe the ox. Let's see. If the ox has the rune of flight on it, it's a nice little... This is just a big butt. That's all that the ox is. Longboat is a creature that we haven't considered. So, let's look at our turn by turn plays. So, this is two. This is two. This is two. This is two. Yeah, when you look at it like that, we have a very early game style deck. Alright. I think we smack the ox. Yeah, don't see a time where I actually really want the ox. Alright. I think Vega's actually a better picture here. Azorius Turtle. Let's see if this works. I mean, we have Vega, we have Nikos, we have payoffs. We have plenty of payoffs. Um, we're going to make them into a law of birds, but we have a we have a rune crown and a rune of flight to help counter that. Yeah, we'll see how this works. We did not get any of the divine verdicts or whatever, so we can't we can't tap them and kill them. So it looks like our wind conditions are going to be our God's All guardians at our undersea invader. Run ashore to help get through some of their threats. Raven form to deal with their big threats. Nico to just keep recurring. Cosmos to keep drawing. Yeah. That looks like it. We have more than... I think we have enough card draw despite ha lacking Behold the Multiverse. We'll see how it works. Azorius Dirtle. Azorius Dirtle. Okay, my mouse is acting up. It's not a good time for the mouse to act up. Oof. Hopefully it doesn't mess with me while I'm playing the game. That's all we can hope for. That's all we can hope for. It's kind of funny that I talked about how Raven Form isn't that good of a removal, and then there's three Raven Forms in this deck. Alright. I have my lands. I could... Worst case scenario, I have God's Hall Guardian. This is a dirtling deck, so all I need to do is draw some blue, and we're good to go. 
Right, just... Yeah, no, I'm not going to play Nico Zofai's Destiny until my God's Hall is in the graveyard. He helloed me, I'll hello back. I'm not going to be aggressive. I might mute him if he starts getting a little annoying, but... Leave as is. Skimfire Avenger. Hmm. Yeah, this is all white right now, so we just foretell. Alright, God's Hall Guardian should dirtle with the Skebfar for a bit. And if I draw blue, I can Nikos, then Raven form on the very next turn. Yeah, we'll see. He has elves. We'll see if he has removal to go with those elves. Oh, he foretelled Herald. Um, sorry. Well, we're going to play God's Hall Guardian, slow down his aggression, and apply some of our own. Would like to draw some lands. Even if it's the tapped floodplain or something. Yeah, if we get an island, we could actually foretell the other raven form and play Nico's the Fight's Destiny, gain ourselves four health, and a bunch of removal say in our back line. Yep. Well God's Hall's vigilance is definitely being of value right now. Alright, let's see your combat trick, sir. Let's see your combat trick. Plus four, plus four. Let's see it. I'm perfectly fine with that. I get a single blue. We get Nico's Defies Destiny. And we get to start bringing the God's Hall Guardian back. How amazing is that? We did not get blue. Yep. If we're not getting any blue lands, then that's kind of an issue. Should be half our deck. We knew that we weren't we weren't starting with the blue lands, but Nico's the fight. Yeah, single blue gives me plus four health, and then the chance to Raven form this guy, and the guards hold guardian back to by hand. Hmm. Gives me plenty of things basically. I think it's haste. Well, that's a little late. It is a slow blue, but it is blue nonetheless. Gosh. If I get two blue, do I just double Nikos? I might just double Nikos. But yeah, gain my blue mana this late into the game is an issue that might cost me it. Alright, gain six health. Play in Nikos. Next turn I can Raven form. I like that. Gain six life. That dirtles one turn. And then we can Raven form the three one. Raven form whatever threat he has, or just keep it going. Yep. Brings me back to nine. That's perfectly fine. If he plays a big scary threat. We can Raven form that. He's about to get we're about to get blue. Only to foretell cards or cast spells that have foretell. Alright. Do I want to foretell this or do I want to play it? If I foretell it, I still have the problem with blue. But I could foretell it and play the other Nikos. And then do that another turn. Yeah, I like that. Alright. Getting ourselves six more health. Dirtle, dirtle. And depending on what he does, I could either bring back the God's Hall Guardian for a big old 3-6. Or I could... Raven form to get rid of this Vengeful Reaper. Yep. Yep. Alright, looks like we're putting him back to Raven form. Hmm. I'm going to grab the God's Hall, actually. 
Add that mana. So we're going to start by Raven forming the Thwap I5. And we can God's Hall and still have one mana left over. Or we can Cosmos Charger and we can foretell instant speed. And I could Longboat. So I could play a Longboat. Cosmos Charger, tap the Cosmos Charger to block a creature if I want. And also God's Hall Guardian the same turn. Oof. Let me count the mana. This does work. I'm wondering if that's even a good play, though. Yeah, I think it's a good enough play. Alright, now we have a Cosmos Charger in the back line. Alright. We'll kill a bird. The Cosmos Charger. Stacks of all. Yep. Is he gonna giant, giant up that guy? Really? Really? Well, we ate a removal spell like that. And guess what? We get the Cosmos Charger back thanks to Nico Defy's Destiny. Alright. I am okay with that. We can also start. Tapping the gates out. Play God's Hall Guardian. And I can Raven form something, or I could just. I can't play both Cosmos Charger and God's Hall Guardian. And this is the issue with Raven form. These the flying actually is an issue right now. And I can't just Raven Raven forming the two three seems like such a waste. Oof. I mean, the best way to spend my mana is to... This has enough to trigger, doesn't it? One, two, one, one, two... Okay, yeah, let's just do the most development, which is God's Hall Guardian. Raven form the Vengeful Reaper. Of all things to target, this is definitely not one I want to target. But this is the issue with Raven Form that sometimes you just have to do stuff like that and you don't like it. Wow. Wow. That ain't good. We are now in a very bad position. Like, exceptionally bad. We're gonna be at one health. Yep, this is the problem with Raven Form. First off, Snakeskin's Veil is a really good card. Sigoth, we need... Yeah, look at this. We don't have enough blockers. Alright, two. We're at two health. So we're going to need an additional flying blocker. So we're going to need to draw the Rune of Flight, like, right ASAP. Nope. Maybe I can scare him into not attack. Oh, I can... Cosmos? No, I can Cosmos or Gates. I can't do both. Yeah, didn't draw enough blue mana. And it punished me drastically. Oh well. Yeah. Kept a hand with four planes and no islands, or no islands, and just planned to draw into the islands later. Got tempoed out. Surprise, surprise, we got tempoed out. Yeah, how many? Wait, hold up. How many card draws do we have? We have Vega, we have Cosmos Elixir, we have Nico, we have Vega. Yeah, no, we have enough card draw. It was just I didn't draw them. Yeah. I think that was a bad matchup, which does bring in the question how many bad matchups do I have for a limited deck? And B, not drawing the colors as I needed them. Alright, here we are. 
So you throw in blue to threaten the boy. We don't need the code spell. We are not that sort of deck. Sucks that we do not have a turn to play, but it's okay. It will be okay. It's better to not have a turn to play than to throw out 1 1 as our turn to play. Or. That is a turn 2. Into a good turn 3. Vega into Scorn if Effigy feels like a good turn 3 play. Would appreciate land, but that's okay. That is okay. You actually got a pathway. Wow. That doesn't have reach. This does. We're never blocking with Vega. Alright. So here's the question. Do we want to foretell, and then do we want to play the Story Seeker to block his Story Seeker, or do we want to foretell? Ooh, ooh. I like that. Alright, so if we could get a land, Cosmos Elixir starts triggering. Probably. Alright, he gets a 3-4. I'm willing to double trade for the Ice High Troll if he tries to swing in. I will triple trade just to guarantee it. He needs two snow mana for that. So if he tries to swing in with the Ice Hide, I'm just blocking with everything. Okay. Alright, nothing has reach. I'm actually gonna just hard cast the Raven form, I think. Um, I could do that later. No, no, I could. I like this. Um, so we have dwarf. We have double cleric. So Lit Jar will work, which means I want to get rid of that while I can. It's the biggest, scariest threat, and now it's just not a thing. So I can decide whether I want to play Lidjara or whether I want to play... Yeah, Lidjara helps me solve this board situation. And then I can start Cosmos Elixirine next turn. Thank you for the double clerics. Really want to land. Yeah, we have a run ashore for removal. We want the land. Alright. Yeah, we'll dirtle. We'll dirtle. If he attacks with a Grim Draugr, I'll attack back with a Story Seeker. Alright. Alright, so I like this. So we attack with a Story Seeker. He has to have a hard issue of does he block and how. Alright, so he's gonna double trade. That's okay. So we go to 22, which means the Cosmo Elixir. Triggers, drawing us cards. Alright. Then we could get a flying 3-5. I like this. I like this play. Oof. Next turn we could make a flying Lit Jara. Alright, return upon the tide. Makes a bunch of elves. It's gonna buff. Alright. Still can't get past my kin seekers. Uh, we're gonna fight the kin seekers. Alright. That code spell cleric. I think I buff up Vega to make sure. That his flying creatures cannot stop him. Stop her. Whatever she is. Whatever it is. Whether it's a guy or a girl. 
And I'm gonna attack with a 3-3 and leave the 3-5 to Glock. There we are. And we just dirtle and draw. Dirtle and draw. He's the one who has to break this board state, not me. And while he tries, we are gonna get more removal. Alright, has menace. Oh no, how am I gonna ever block a menace? He's gonna give it plus four, plus four. Do I wanna block with everything to guarantee? Not right now. If he wants to use two spells to trade like this, that's perfectly fine by me. Alright. And every turn that we delay is another turn my Cosmos Elixir keeps on going, keeping on. I could alternatively Mistwalker Bound in Gold, but what would I even bound? I want to save my removal. Yeah, if I get another Fortel off of this, that'd be great. Now I mentioned the big scary body. There we are, Rune Crown, so if Litjara ever dies... We put on a Rude Crown, and I'm pretty sure that casts the spell from the graveyard, which counts as a place that's not my hand. Alright, if he makes a big scary threat, we just bound it in gold. Alright, so we're gonna actually going to attack with both of these, knowing we have a run of run ashore to protect us if we need be. Yeah, we could run ashore any big threats he makes. And while we do, we draw cards. Yep, he laid it all, all there, and we just do the rest. Mm -hmm. Run ashore, as I said, one in your deck is always good. Perfect, he sacrifices to create an angel. That's one of the things we will run ashore. We will turn that to our hand, his hand. And... Alright. Non land permit to the top of its owner's library. We will return Coma's Faithful. And return to his owner's hand, this guy. Awesome. Alright. Now we attack with these two. Keep applying pressure with my infinite reach. All right. Think it's time to play them, Mist Walker. Yep, you just kind of realized I have all the card advantage. I just get a dirtle round. I have all Mist Walker was going to be my third flyer. He would not have enough blockers. Yep. Hey, what's our mythic? Valky. Oh my gosh, we got a Valky. That's a good card. That's a that's a really good card. Unfortunately, like most cards, if you want to play a deck with them, you usually want to play a deck that needs four of them. No oh well. No oh well. I mean, it gives me Scorn Effigy. It gives me Funeral Longboat into Rune Crown into Scorn Effigy. Alright. So I get extra card draw. I have a Cosmos Elixir that's just one land away. I don't need to apply pressure. We're going to foretell this so that we have the threat should we need it. And also, should we draw white, we can have the strong turn, th the strongest turn threes. <sighs> Not when I want to draw. Alright. Can cast it from the graveyard. Alright. So we're going to probably put on like a, our longbow or something like that. Do it like that. Get the card draw. Alright, next turn. Next turn we have Cosmos Elixir. Start the card draw roll, rolling in. Not bold recluse. Yep. And then we could... So if we kept two, three. Yeah, no. We're gonna do this. And we're just gonna... No attacks. Just gain a little health. And in a future turn, we'll get bigger and scarier. Hopefully next turn we could Funeral Longboat and Fortel. 
more than happy to just rune crown. Oh, I want Vega first because Vega, the rune crown will give me um, the rune of flight from the grave, which is not my hand. All right, but next turn I was hoping funeral longboat plus. All right, forces me to block, kills my scorn effigy, and deals two damage actually. Oh, deals three damage. Forced to block. Well played. Well played, sir, actually. Alright. So we'll have the funeral longboat. And yeah, if you're not ahead, this card just basically gives you life and nothing more. And that's the main issue with it. Oof. Well, the Cosmos Charger will be able to punt to block it. I want to draw an additional land. I really want to draw an additional land. I mean, I could block one of the recluses with my Funeral Longboat. Alright, so he's an aggressive deck. Alright. Yeah, we're playing Vega. We're putting... We're foretelling this. And on his turn, we will be... Tapping Vega to crew the longboat to block the not volt. To block the 5 3. He's almost out of steam. So, with us Raven forming, whatever his biggest threat is. Alright. Well, we're crewing before he kills that, at least. Unfortunately, our card draw is only Cosmos Elixir. But he did not destroy our Cosmos Elixir. I want you to consider that. When this creature leaves the battlefield. Okay. Yeah. Alright. So we're gonna... I think we are gonna... Just... Um, foretell the Godsell Guardian. Then we can Cosmos Charger tap to... And we're gonna, yeah. Well, it will make sense when the turn comes through. All right. Honestly, that life gain is pretty nice. We're gonna trick him into swinging in. We're gonna play the Cosmos Charger, but we're actually gonna use the Cosmos Charger to crew the longboat to block the theme. Yep. We'll save the Raven form for real threats. God's Hall Guardian should be threatening enough that he can't get around it. Master Scald brings back the Valor of the Worthy. That's okay. Alright. We're not we don't have enough mana for that right now. Alright. Nothing. The only thing we'd exile is the Master Scald. I don't think it threatens that badly. And honestly, this Cosmos Elixir just healing me up, preventing him from aggroing me down, is doing its job. It is doing its job. Whew. So he has a Valor of the Worthy. He has a random card. Binds that in gold. All right, so we could run ashore to put our Cods All Guardian back in our hand, which is Athena value. Alright, so we're not blocking the Master Scald. I'm willing to sacrifice the Cosmos Charger to kill the Not Volt if it has a Valor on it. If he swings in with all. If it's just those two. Alright, I'm going to block the Not Volt, I think. Kind of not how I want to do this, but. I think it's my only option, really. Does that mean I have to Raven form the Master Scald? Yeah. Not where I want to use Raven form, but it's fine. We're gaining life slowly. We can block the one ones in the air or the shield mate on the ground. If we could get one more land, we can run ashore. Tell them the rune crown will turn this to a two five, which will be a much more. Ooh boy. So. 
that's actually horrible because it's for each token, each diff token with a different name, he gets a copy of it. He has two tokens with different names already. All right. So we're going to start by drawing a card here. We're going to search the graveyard. All right. Still not getting the card draw I need. I can't attack in. I'm not going to go for one damage, you know? All right. So he's about to swarm the board like no man's business. And then I have to run ashore the best gear shield mate or something like that. I don't I don't know what I need to do, but it ain't look good. Whatever it is. All right. Let's see. Yeah. This does its job. Yeah. I think this is the play I have to go with. Land needed ya. Uh, not attacking with a life linker. Blocking put gives me more health on the long run. And here he goes with gaining 4-4 four, four in power with battle for Bredegard. The hope is the longer we dirtle, the stronger I become. But that's starting to become not the case. And that's, that's not what I want to hear. If he starts swinging with everything, I just have to start blocking like a madman. Actually, because of the lifelink, I think it's okay. That being said, he has a lot of threats. Doesn't swing in. Alright. Will foretell the raven form, equip the rune crown. And we can later run ashore to return the Godshall Guardian to our hand and drop something on the bottom. We'll do that another day. So we'll foretell this and equip the Life Linker with more power and flying. All right, leave the Mistwalker the ability to pump. Yeah, if he had the. Like a big broken wings that. Alright. Well, we now know what he has, and that's perfectly fine. I'm perfectly okay with this. Let's dirtle. I dirt when we dirtle, I gain life. He's here's the thing, no one's breaking the cosmos elixir. Does no one realize that that's card advantage? Like I get that I have to be ahead, but like look at this bo board stall. You're letting me be ahead by laying it stall. Oh my god. Thank god I kept the raven for him. Alright, and then we're taking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Okay, we're taking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have to Raven form that, just flat out. Um, yep. Turn that into a 2, 3, so it wins the trade. Except. So we're going to 5, but Cosmos Elixir keeps us alive. All right, Nico defies destiny. Get ourselves a little more life. Raven form that guy before he becomes a bigger threat. And we dirtle. We dirtle. Dirtly, dirtly, dirtle. If he's smart, he just starts swinging in with all the flyers. Either that, or he has some sort of win condition in his deck that I don't know about. He's drawn a lot more lands than I have. He's probably getting annoyed because that means I get more engine, but I'm really looking for other things. Please, dirtle, sir. Dirtle. Hmm. 
I have a bunch of raven forms. That will be nice to put in. Alright. Just another Mistwalker, I think. I could keep the Run Ashore active. And then I could... We have a turn next turn. Yeah, I think we keep the Run Ashore active. It's kind of sad that that means that that just burns away, but I think that's fine. Just slowly gaining our life back. 20 cards, 18 cards. Gosh, I hope he doesn't mill me. That is a legitimate thing that could happen here. But if he plays a big scary creature like that Bretta again... Alright. Here's how I want to do it. Alright. On its owner's library. Let's return the best gear shield mate. And we'll do the God's Hall Guardian. Alright. So he just decides. Whether he's pointing that at the top or the bottom. And then we get our God's Hall back. The great thing about our God's Hall is it can attack. Yep. I knew that was a theme. Don't worry about it. Is that Broken Wings or something? We know we need a way to deal with any big scary threats he plays. He has something. Four, five, six, seven. So I can miss Walker and double foretell. So he knows our hand. So he knows exactly what's in there, but he can't do anything about it. And we're drawing cards along the... We're gaining life along the way. I'm not even sure God's Hall Guardian can attack. It's gonna have to... It's gonna, like, have to get triple chump blocked, but... You know what? That's gonna open him up. And I'm okay with opening him up. No, I could attack with a Mistwalker and just pump. Yeah, I think that's going to be our next play. Next turn, we attack with a Mistwalker and a God's Hall Guardian, I think. We see how he tries to block it all. But yep. These board stalls are games where we go, what, 20, 30 turns maybe even? Maybe not... Not 30 turns, but we go a lot of turns in these sort of board stall situations. Hopefully my deck wins in these board stalls, because if I don't, we have other issues. That being said, he has some good cards, but then again, if you're in draft, you're going to have some good cards. So we have a Raven Form for another buff creature, like the previous one. And we have a Bounding Gold for just a big, scary, beefy boy. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Alright. Go and attack with the God's Hall and one Mistwalker. See how he. Su see if he super blocks or just starts chomping like a chump. Oh, wait. He's still in the block phase. Oh. Nope. Alright, so this will give me two life, and then it will give me mana, and then it will pull out a raven form. Alright. 
as far as he knows, we could be holding on to like some sort of counter spell. All right, so Grizzled Outrider gets bound, and the next threat gets Raven formed. Two, three, four. All right. And even if he has a combat trick where he destroys the bounded gold and blocks the God's Hall Guardian, like one, he's not destroying my Cosmos Elixir. Two, I'm gonna bring back the God's Hall using the um using the Nico Defies Destiny. I think attacking with these two is good. Alright, give him a chance to block. I feel like keeping my two mana open is scaring him. I don't know what I'm scaring him of, but he's scared. Hmm. I probably could have attacked with a Story Seeker there. He'd have to trade for two. It would give me a card draw off of Cosmos Elixir. All right. I'm all right double blocking with God's Home. Here we go. That's what I expected. All right. Oh, nope. Still scared. Still scared. Honestly, as long as he's scared, I'm good. I think it's time to bring back the Cosmos Charger. Nah. Let's bring a Raven Form in. So I could Raven Form that Braggart with no concern. Actually, if you want to super block, I'm all for it. Yeah, I could kill the Blackguard with just my God's All Guardian. So, I'm okay trading Braggart for Guardian. Because if this blocking doesn't change, if he still doesn't block at all, yeah. I mean, if he never blocks, he never gets pressured, he never wins. I'm going to pump this up one more time, actually. save that mana in case he starts swinging in and we need the extra attack boost from the Mistwalker. Yeah, if he decks with the Bragger, I'm okay training the Kid and Seek, the God's Hall Guardian and the Story Seeker to stop that guy. Honestly, I just pulled a Snakeskin Veil out of his hand with a Raven form. I'm okay with that. I am okay with that. Alright. Next turn, I attack with Boat. So here's the thing. Because I pumped it up, as much as I did, either Miss Walker gain through wins me the game. Either Miss Walker gain through wins me the game. You have two Miss Walkers, and anytime he plays a threat, I could Raven form it to make it not a threat. Mm. Is he going to swing out? Yeah, if you text with a bragger. Alright. I think I just attack with both the Mistwalkers. 
Yep. I'm good with this. If he wants to swing back, there's going to be consequences. If he doesn't block, he's dead. He has to math it out, that if these both aren't blocked, he dies. I don't know, he's made a lot of mistakes. He's been seen with eight creatures in play, so... Maybe that's not the case. Maybe he doesn't realize. There you go. Other block. There you are. Alright. Well, here's all our lands. Oops, all lands. If he attacks with these, then I actually d get deal with the issue that I might deck myself. And then the Mistwalkers get through. So, <laughs> he's in a bad spot. And not playing the Raven form actually gives me the Mistwalker lethal. Alright. It's been a whole... Has he, did he just draw that Bound of Gold, or has he been holding on to that? Anyways, he doesn't like trading. This is actually a theme that a lot of new players don't know how to do. They don't know how to trade properly. So... Gives me the ability to just keep swinging in. He has to keep jump blocking, or he dies. Yep. Alright. And I'm going to save that code spell until I could trigger it with Raven Form. The Braggart has shown it's not a threat because he's not—he's too afraid to attack with it. Eight cards left in the deck. I'm not even sure what's in the deck anymore. I think there's another Kin Seekers. Um... If I Raven form, it's going to be on a turn where I attack with the entire board. And I'm not sure I'm ready to be doing that. Wow. Right, I had a lot of Raven forms. I knew that. I just didn't realize it was this many. At this rate, I'm mo I'm about to get milled, honestly. Ugh. Do I attack to allow him to get through with the Axe Guard Braggart and um, make sure I don't deck myself? That's actually a play. Gosh, I must look like a monster. I have seven... Yeah, I have five, nine... I have eleven lands in play of blue-white of all colors and five cards in hand, plus one foretold. Oof. I'm trying to think. So if he has the buff spell, that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Not lethal. Alright. I think to prevent myself from decking, I'm actually going to attack with the God's Hall and the Litjara to force him to try a chump trade. And um, possibly bring his Axe Guard Bracker in next time. Alright. And he's just jump trading. Alright. Where's the combat trick? Show me the combat trick. Sir, you need a combat trick. 
for your own safety, let's get you a combat trick. There's the combat trick. Alright. So that should do a 5 5. About darn time. Congratulations. Alright. Do I attack? Do I Raven form? Do I. Or do I just keep swinging in? Um. That thing's gonna swing in and then untap. So, we might as well just turn it into a 1 1. But we wanna do that next turn, I think. I think we actually want him to attack and then lose us the life. Yep. Gates of Istfel is completely useless. We want to lose the life for the Cosmos Elixir to work. To not work, actually. Oh no. Alright, so that's what we have to Raven form. Actually, yeah, let's just... Wait, hold up. Code Spell Cleric. Get ourselves a 4-7. And we just charge on in with everything. He might actually deck us. That's the scary theme. We might actually have decked ourselves. Because we went so slow... And we've got so much dirt value, we decked ourselves. That is entirely a possibility that just occurred. Undersea Invader, thank you for not being the bomb card. Gonna be quite the look of shock when he's like, Haha, you've decked yourself. 5-6. Take it. We need more damage. He needs to attack, or we need more damage. There is a way he can block and survive. It has to be the second spell I cast this turn. He has survival, which means he has victory. And that's the most infuriating thing. That he actually won this by decking me. Because I went one turn too slow. With one health, he won. Oh my gosh. And it was God's Hall Guardian at the bottom. I wonder if he sees it. He might concede. Some people concede not realizing what's going on. Wow. Wow. We decked ourselves. We are so slow and dirtily, we decked ourselves. We are so slow and dirtily, we decked ourselves there. Alright. Well, turns out we don't win board stalls. <laughs> Whoa, my mic got really messed up. But yeah, turns out we don't win board stalls. Uh, that was not what I expected. All right, we do need one more mana, but we have Funeral, Funeral Longboat Story Seeker until we get that mana, and when we get that mana, we are looking A-OK. -okay. Scare him with an Anul. I think we play the Longboat first, because we have a Story Seeker right behind it. Nope, we play Story Seeker first to tell that guy to back the heck off.
We do need to draw land. We do need to draw land. But if we draw that land, we're in good shape. Yep, go ahead. Alright. A single land, sir. I would appreciate a single land. I think we can come back from this. But we need a single land, sir. A single land. Well, it starts with a single land, I guess. Alright, so you foretold. Aquia Mind Rot, which will rip out the, the two six drops in our hand. Fearless Pup. Quite a powerful card. Never underestimate the Fearless Pup. Do we want to play Vega, or do we want to play Nico? I think we want to play Vega first. Apply more pressure. Get ourselves Eagle's Eye. Do we attack with Story Seeker? He blocks with the 1-1 one, one and the 1-2. Or he blocks with the 2-2. Two, two. We trade. I have the boat still active. Actually, the way I want to do it is I want to crew the boat, attack with the boat. I like this. So, the boat has vigilance. So, take three damage, sir. I'm not freaking blocking with Vega. Is he about a demon bolt to Vega? I would not be surprised. No, sir. Hagri Mob. Man, I just realized how late in the game it is for me to be having three lands. And because he tapped out, he cannot attack with a fear Fearless Pup. Ugh. So now I can attack with the Vega. Um, then I can do a Surprise Cosmos Charger. We might be the aggressor this time. Which sounds absurd. Do we play Cosmos Charger as an opportunity to get a land? Nah. So here's the thing, if he attacks with the Hagri Mob, we can Cosmos Charger. Alright. And here's the thing. So by not playing the Cosmos Charger yet, we get an opportunity to... Not get target Cosmo charge or targeted here. Hmm. Actually, wait, I don't want to block that. Really need the car the mana we're gonna rune crown looking for a land with a flying rune search the library for rune of flight still no land i say we're the aggressor i know you think otherwise and i understand your concerns I think we're the aggressor, sir. Alright, we'll kill the infernal pet. I'm okay. Losing the funeral longbow. Claim to ten. And I'll discard the undersea invader. Don't need it in this form in this fight. Oof. We could Raven form the Hagri Mob or the Dread Rider. We'll have. We're definitely Hagri. Um, Raven farming the Dread Rider. Right. Yep. 
Okay, so we just need to check. Does he win the race if we equip this? So it will be... So we win next turn, but does he kill me in one turn? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, easily. He kills me easily. So I cannot equip. Too legit to equip. Well, I'm attacking with Cosmos Charger. Looks like from there, I am playing Mistwalker, just as a body. And then he's gonna Vicious Return something, and I Raven Form it. Definitely did not help that I only got three lands. I think I could have done this if I didn't get stuck with three lands. I truly believe I could have done this if I didn't get stuck with three lands. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, oh, okay, you have a flying blocker. Oh, that thing has haste? I had no idea that thing had haste. Let's see, five. So if I block here, I take one, two, Take five, six, seven, eight. Well, that's game. Now I draw a land. I think it's a little late. Okay, at least Raven formed this guy. That doesn't help me much. Yeah, no, we just, we didn't draw lands. We didn't draw lands. That's all. So we got one loss because we decked ourselves. That was absurd on his part. Good job. We're just going to good game this guy. But, yeah. We decked ourselves once. We got Cosmos. We got tempoed out this time because we got no lands. Okay, I blame the lack of lands here. There was no reason. I knew we took a bit of a risky hand, but we had plays in the early game. Ugh. 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 I feel like I shouldn't have gone that little. I think I should have gone a little further at least. Like, okay, I get it. Deck wasn't perfect. We should have gone further than that. 7, 14, 15, 16, 17 lands. We didn't draw enough lands one game. The other game was our mistake. Okay, I'll admit to the game where we decked ourselves. There was some of our mistake there. Mm. But, like, ugh. Ugh. Oh well. Oh well. So note to self, don't let yourself get decked. And if you get mana screwed, sucks to be you, I guess. I don't really know what else I'm supposed to learn from that. Um, don't... Like, that hand was perfectly fine if I drew one more land. And... So, I don't blame... Me there. Definitely, I probably could have played more aggressive, knowing I was the aggressor that time. Would have been helpful. But... Yeah. Huh. Okay. 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 I really don't know what else to say. Yeah. That should not... I feel like I should be going more than just like one or two win. One win. Like, I feel like the decks that I'm going zero and one wins are more of misfortune. Am I... Maybe I'm having an issue in making decks that are consistent. Maybe that's it? Is two land hands really as dangerous as they have been? Do I really need to mulligan for three lands when we have a lot of three drops right off the back seat? We had two draws out of land. Maybe two draws was a little too little. I mean, f let's see, 70 cards in the deck. No, two dra draws in out of land was enough. Two draws out of land was an average. Ugh. Oh well. Oh well. Just pick yourself up, scrape off, show up the next day. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day.